Listen now for these familiar words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning in the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week we began this series and I invited all of us to have a down-to-earth Christmas. And no sooner do we start to try to have a down-to-earth Christmas than we read this Christmas story of a virgin birth and we say, that doesn't sound very down-to-earth. I mean, this sounds pretty miraculous, right? This is, this is hard to figure out. This is hard to, to try to get your mind around and it's not a, really a down-to-earth thought. It's, it's an amazing, you know miraculous God moment when you try to, it's like, it's like trying to be on that college playoff football uh, committee, trying to figure out which teams are going to go to the final four. I mean, this is, this is hard to figure out. This is, this is high theological water we're in when Luke tells us about a virgin birth. It's, it's complex, and there are many, many things we're try- we don't understand about it, and we're trying to figure it out. But I want to suggest to you this morning that, that Mary might be the most down-to-earth person in the Bible. She's, you know, often portrayed as someone who is somehow superhuman, that she's got, like, superhuman powers, and, and she's, she's, you know like one of the superheroes. She's just got this extra thing that you and I don't have that, that she's amazing like this, that God would use her. But if you read this story that Luke is telling us, he's telling us about a woman who was an ordinary peasant girl from Nazareth. Last year, a group from this church went to the Holy Land and, and um, we were in Nazareth. And I remember that the, the, one of our guides kept saying to us how, how strange that Nazareth was the place that, that the, the earthly parents of Jesus would come from, that, that Nazareth was nothing. It was not even on some ancient maps. It, it just was a bit little village, and, and there wasn't much to it. And I, 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 as he's telling us this, I'm thinking of the words of Andrew Lloyd Webber in the musical that he wrote, Jesus Christ Superstar. Why'd you pick such a backward play, place in such a strange land? Why Nazareth? Why Mary? I mean, there's, there's, there are things about this story that, you know, if, you, if you'd said, well, there was, a, there was a princess who was destined to be a queen and, and she was chosen to deliver the Son of God. But no, it's Mary, a peasant girl. I mean, God works in the most mysterious ways to accomplish God's possibilities. 
And as you think about the heavenly possibilities of Christmas, the, the, the majesty of this story, I want to try to bring it down to earth into our experience because I think Mary's experience is a very down-to-earth human experience uh, of a person who is very much like, like we are in terms of just ordinary down-to-earth people, but God worked through her life to do something extraordinary to bring about heavenly possibilities. And I want to suggest to you that God can also work in your life as ordinary and down to earth as you might feel, that God looks at your life with heavenly possibilities, that God sees that through you, heavenly things can be accomplished in this world. Well, Mary, um, here's this young peasant girl and she's, you know, it's the summertime and she's near Nazareth and she's engaged to a man named Joseph, we're told, and she's just out minding her business and an angel appears to her and says, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And I love Luke's understated response because to me it's, it's like Mary pondered in her mind, was, she was perplexed by this greeting and pondered in her mind and her heart what kind of greeting this might be. Really? She was perplexed? How about awestruck? How about, I mean, it's not every day an angel appears to you and starts talking, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And, 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 you know, the angel's talking to her, and you can just see Mary in your mind. You can see her. She's just kind of in this moment where she's going, what is happening? This is awesome. This angel saying that God favors me, that God loves me, God cares about my life, and that I found favor with God, and that I don't have to be afraid. And behold, I'm going to bear a son, and he's going to be the son of the Most High God. And, and the angel's reading this description. You know, you think about this. He will be great. He will be called the son of the Most High God. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary goes, now wait, what? You ever had a wait what moment? Where someone's telling you something that just, and they're going along and you're going, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's a, wait, what? Someone asks you a favor and they start telling you about it and you go, oh yeah, I could, wait, wait, what? You want me to what? And I think that's Mary's reaction. That's why it's so down to earth. It's so real. Because she's like us. I mean, have you ever felt a nudge that God was calling you to do something? You ever felt as you read scripture or as you were praying or as you were in church or maybe you're out in the world doing something, maybe you're just minding your own business and, and you feel that there's a message that's being sent to you, that God is trying to get your attention, maybe subtly, maybe not so subtly, that God has been trying to, to, to tell you this is what I want you to do with your life. I want you to, I want you to be a follower of Christ. I want you to live this faith in action. I want you to put aside what you would do and do what I would want you to do. And, and those nudges, you, 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 you're kind of going along and you're going, oh, I just, I love God. I love this message God has given to us. We're loved by God. We're special to God. God cares about us. We don't have to be afraid. Uh, and, and then God starts saying things like, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And you go, wait, what? Now, a friend of mine was, was sharing with me that he was struggling with the, um, the whole idea of the virgin birth. And I was going, man, the virgin birth is nothing. I mean, it's, it's this love your enemies business, you know? Or, or what about John three sixteen? God so loved the world that, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not be. Wait, 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 what? Whosoever? Wait, what? Is, it, did God really mean that? 
that God's grace is available to everyone? Wait, what? So if you think Mary's response is out of the ordinary, I mean, I, to, me, to me, it's the most down-to-earth response you can get when God asks you to do something great and to step out of what you would normally do in your life and do something bold and wonderful for God. It's, it's the most normal response in the world when you have a wait what moment and you wake up and realize, you know, you're going along and everything's great as a follower of Jesus Christ. And then Jesus asks you to do something, to love people, to, to step beyond your own comfort zone, to, to do something incredible for God. And you go, wait, what? And part of that's because you go, who am I? Who am I to do something great and wonderful for God? I mean, Mary's this peasant girl. She's going, wait, what? I'm just a peasant girl. Part of it's our own fear. Because the, the circumstances of this call on our lives to, to do something bold and wonderful for God may make us look funny in the midst of our culture. It may make us look unusual to others that we would step out and do what God is calling us to do and not what others expect us to do. Now for Mary, this was very real in terms of her life and the way it would unfold. So to have a wait what moment might be the most down to earth response that you could have when God asks you to do something. So the angel tells her all these things that she's going to do and she's trying to come to grips with it. And you look at this, the whole point of this, it seems to me, is that God's heavenly possibilities are going to be accomplished through ordinary earthly people. God's heavenly possibilities are going to be accomplished through everyday ordinary people. You look at this, uh, that she's favored by God and, and, and she realizes that God cares about her, this lowly person, that God cares about her. And God says, you know, it looks impossible to you. That's why you said, wait, what? This looks impossible to you, but with God, nothing is impossible. And so she's, she's, you know, trying to take this in. God's going to work in and through my life to do this incredible thing. And, and there's this one phrase that, that kind of just jumped out at me this week that I guess I, I don't know that I've paid as much attention to when I've, re, when I've read this story because I've, I've tended to be focused more on the do not be afraid and you found favor with God and with God nothing is impossible. But this week there was this word that just jumped out to me and sometimes when you're reading the Bible it might be helpful just to, to underline the phrase that jumps out to you and it might be different today what jumps out with, to you than what it will be next year or five years from now or 10 years from now or tomorrow. I mean, this is how the scripture is alive to us. It speaks to our situation today. Well, what I read, the, the, the word that jumped out to me was overshadowed, overshadowed. Because it says that, that as, um, as the angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you and therefore the child to be born will be called holy, the son of God. Overshadowed. How is God going to accomplish this incredible heavenly possibility of sending Jesus into the world? God's love is going to overshadow Mary. And here's the question that I wrote down, you know, as I was thinking about that word overshadowed. Whose shadow is more prominent in my life? I mean, is my shadow casting a bigger shadow than I'm allowing God to cast in my life? Or am I willing to allow God's Holy Spirit to work in my life in such a way that it's God's shadow that is cast and not my shadow? Does that make sense? Of course it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. 
It means that we have to, to submit our shadow to God's shadow, allowing God's shadow to be larger than us. It, this sounds impossible. I mean, how do we do this? Well, you look at somebody like Mary, this ordinary person, and what does she do? She has this wait what moment, like I think you and I would have when, whenever God calls you to do something. She realizes this is how this is going to work, is that God is going to work in and through her life to bear the love of God to the world. Very much what you and I are called to do. That you and I are called to be overshadowed by God's love in such a way that the shadow that we cast is really not our own. It is the love of Christ overshadowing and flowing out of us into the world. And then she says, okay, I'm all in. Let it be to me according to your word. I'm all in. And that's the moment of courage and, and trust, the, the courage to trust that God is in this with you, whatever God has asked you to do. And it may be the most down-to-earth thing about her. She's willing to overlook all the mystery of it and just say, I don't understand this, but I'm willing to go because you, God, have called me to go and therefore I will go. I always think about Mary with that response. Let it be to me according to your word. This one who would raise her son, who one day would kneel in a garden all by himself, pleading to God for his life and saying the words that echoed his own mother's words. Not my will, but yours be done. Amazing. Amazing to think about this down-to-earth peasant girl who had the capacity to trust. Every bit as much as you and I are called to trust that God can work in and through our lives to accomplish heavenly possibilities. Years ago, I was on staff at, at Lover's Lane United Methodist Church in Dallas. I was an associate pastor there. And while I was there, I bought my first house. And I was so excited to buy that, that first house. It was over in the Love Field area. It's about a block from Celebration Restaurant, if you've ever been there. And I frequented that restaurant during those years. Um, love that restaurant. But anyway, I, um, I, I bought a, a house about a block away from Celebration Restaurant. It was about a, I think maybe 1,200 square feet. I might be exaggerating. It was really, really small. And I was so proud. I bought it. And my parents, the, the week after I bought it, my parents came over and I was going to show them around. And, and uh, it didn't take long. So it's like, it's the living room. This is the bedroom. This is the bedroom. This is the one bathroom. And this is the backyard. And I showed them the backyard. We went out in the backyard and um, it was a real fixer-upper. I got a great deal in this house. And, um, and um, so the backyard had not been tended to in a while. And so I'm standing there and my father's just kind of laughing at me. And uh, my mother steps out there. And there are, the, there are these moments in life where you realize who people are. I mean, really. This is one of those moments for me when I really realized who my mother was. And it, it played out in all aspects of her life. But my mother, looking at this, looks out upon this and says, oh, this is just pregnant with possibilities. Seriously, my father and I, I remember we looked at each other, we were like, this is just pregnant with possibilities. And, it, and it, what 
I began to realize is this is who my mother was, that, that she saw situations that looked overwhelming. She saw people whose lives looked like this. And what she saw was the next picture, that. She, she saw the possibilities in people. She saw the possibilities in situations. And as I think about that, I think about, you know, how God looks at our lives when we see that first picture. When we see that we've made a mess of things. We see our world and we, it just, there are times it just seems overwhelming that we've made a mess of things. And I think God sees a world that is pregnant with possibilities. And God has chosen people like us, ordinary people, just like Mary, just just folks. God works through folks, just ordinary people like us to accomplish heavenly possibilities. You and I have been called to do this big, bold, wonderful thing to receive the love of Jesus Christ and to bear that love to the world, to share that love with others. And there are moments in the midst of that that we just go, wait, what? You want us to do that for the whole world, for everyone? Exactly. For with God, nothing is impossible. When people of faith step forward and say, let it be. We'll trust God and and let it be according to God's word. We'll go and do what God has called us to do. Let us pray. God, some of us here today feel like our lives are like that messy backyard. But you look upon it filled with possibilities. And I pray that you would inspire us today through an ordinary person like Mary who did something so extraordinary She trusted in you. She trusted that you could take her life and that you could work through her life, even her life, to accomplish your heavenly vision for this world. Lord, bring us down to earth this Christmas and let us realize that you've called us to that same purpose. Help us to put our trust in you, our faith in you, that even in times when it feels messy or uncomfortable, you are working in our lives and in this world to bring about your heavenly possibilities. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that our lives might be overshadowed by your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.